Hi there everybody, it's Oliver here from Blendtoots.com. In this tutorial we're going to cover how to create and transform objects in Blender. So first things first, if you're new to Blender you're probably still wondering what the hell is this thing here. Well this is the 3D cursor and it's very useful. Uh, later we're going to see some applications for it but for now let's say that this tells Blender where to create new objects. You can position it left clicking in the space okay with shift C you recenter it and you can position it precisely from the orthographic views. You can even align it but we're going to see that later. For now let's stay in the perspective and recenter this 3D cursor. Now let's see how to create objects. Uh, the first way is pressing here, add in the main menu, selecting mesh for example and add a plane. Okay. The second way is the shortcut Shift A. Will pop up a menu like this where you will have the same exact menu as here. Right? So it's very useful. Add a Q for example. And now the third way is pressing the spacebar and writing down add for example and now you can search here what to add sample you have here plane, cube, circle, tube or you can write precisely what you want to add for example add a tube press enter and here we have a tube now when you create an object or uh, execute some operator you will have here in this tool shelf which you can hide or show with the T shortcut or from here in the view menu tool shelf you will have some properties for that object or that operator in this case we created an object so we have here the operator name add tube and here we have some options like this which are the vertices that can form the tube radius depth and things like that okay now I'm going to show you another way of creating objects. If you create an object right now, you see that it's aligned to the world. But there is another way to align it, which is go to the preferences, control alt u and select here align object to view. Okay? So now when you add an object, it will be aligned to the view. Well, this is useful. For example, if you want to add a plane, you can add it from here, from the top view, from being the floor, or you can add it from a side view for being a wall. Okay? Or just from another view here. Like this. So, as you can see, it's pretty useful. Okay, now let me explain two basic concepts. When you work in a 3D software, you can transform and edit objects. The difference between editing and transforming is that transforms don't change the topology or the shape of the object, but editing does. So when you move, rotate, or scale an object, you are transforming it, and when you enter in the edit mode, uh, yeah, that's why it's called edit mode in Blender, and move vertices around or stood faces you are editing that object because you are modifying its topology and shape. On this tutorial we'll cover transforms and in future tutorials of modeling we'll see the editing. And that's it. Now you know this, let's move on to translating, rotating and scaling objects. So let's create an object so you can see the manipulators. This is the translate manipulator. Here in the 3D view header, you can select which manipulator you want to use. For example, this is the rotate one and this is the scaling one. You can show or hide the manipulators by pressing this icon here. Now, if you click an arrow and move it, you are moving the object on that axis. If, you, if I want, for example, to move the object in the C and Y axis at the same time, what I 
have to do is to shift click the X axis so it will be moving in the other two axes at the same time now if we click and drag and while dragging I press shift it will be slowed down so we can do a more precise movement and if we press control it will be moving with the snapping options this is the perfect time to explain the snapping which is here in the 3D view header if you activate it you don't need to press control it will be snapping automatically and if you with this activated want to move it without snapping you have to push control so it moves normally but the most useful at least for main things is to disable it and just pressing control when you want to snap this is the kind of snapping you do now it's with increments so it will snap, it, it snap the object to the grid okay in whatever axis you can uh, snap it to vertices, to edges, faces or volumes but for now we are not going to see that you can select rotate it's the same click and drag click and drag and with the scaling is the same click and drag click and drag and if you press on the center you will scale in all the axes at the same time this happens too with the transform it will move the object relative to the view okay now you can select more than one manipulator at the same time for example if I want to show the manipulators of rotating and moving at the same time just shift click and we have here the translating and rotating objects at the same time now for the rotate if you press in the center you will rotate it in a trackball method so this is rotating in all the axes you can also uh, transform objects from the properties panel so if you change here to the object uh, menu you will have here a sub menu called transform with location rotation and scale values so you can change them here or write them directly into these sliders you can also from the 3d view press N to discover the properties tool shelf and here you got to the transform panel with location rotation and scale now let's say what the coordinate systems are for example we have this cube rotated just a bit and a bit more so you can see better the difference you can see even the the cube is rotated the manipulator is aligned to the world if we take the translate manipulator you can see that if we move the object into the C axis it will move on the world C axis but if we want to use the local C axis of the object we have to go here to this list and select local for example so we can use this the local C axis of the object right we have several more coordinate system systems and we have the ability to create a uh, customized coordinate system depending on objects we can do it from transform orientation here we have the same menu and here create so with create we're going to add here a new coordinate system which is mesh which is the system of this cube so if we add here another object like this we are going to use this coordinate system of the other object even this object is not oriented that way so it's pretty cool now let's go to the initial frame alright the, the shortcut for accessing the coordinate systems is Alt Spacebar. So here you have 
global normal gimbal local and view okay let's go to the global for now let's take a look now at the shortcuts for transforming objects in blender we have to select the object I'm going to hide the manipulator and now the shortcuts are G for grabbing in a view coordinate system R for rotating and S for scaling if you right click it will be cancelled alright now let's say I want to move this object just on one axis well while grabbing so press G and while grabbing we can press X Y or set so the object will be aligned to that axis pressing R twice we rotate the object on a trackball method so we have this for example and now if we want to move this object on a local axis we can press X for example twice and we move the object on a local axis the same for Y pressing twice and the same for Z Okay. The same happens with rotating and with scaling. And there is even another method to uh, align the object to an axis. For example, let's right click it for selected and press G. Now, while grabbing, if we press the middle mouse button, depending on the direction I grab, it will be aligned to one axis so this is very cool another thing if I press well I have to have this activated release confirm so if we right click and drag it will be moved automatically on a view coordinate system another thing while grabbing for example if I want to move this object on X and Y at the same time just press shift and set and there we go the same if I want to move it on C and X at the same time just press shift and Y while grabbing sorry shift and Y and here we have it so this is a very cool system. I think this is a good moment to show you how to configure your Blender measurements. So if you go here to the scene panel, you can see I'm working on metric. So I have everything in meters and degrees and that stuff. But you can change it to imperial for working in inches and well, this is where how you want. And none you're working with blender units but let's work with meters right now so let's take a look at this 3d view header and when I'm transforming an object you will see that here some numbers will appear for example if I move the object with G and X you can see there the amount of centimeters I'm moving it alright so without confirming the action just while dragging you can type down the amount of centimeters you want or meters or whatever so if I put here one you can see that it automatically will move my object one meter I can backspace and press for example 3 or just 0.3 if I want to move it uh, 30 centimeters in the X axis okay the same for rotating for example in the X axis I wanted to rotate 90 degrees and that's it so this is very very useful okay now let's see the 3d cursor functions so let's create another object for example I don't know uh, an sphere like this and let's hide these panels here okay so if I want to align this sphere to
to this object we can use the 3D cursor for that we can use it even for align the sphere for a vertex okay but now we're going to align it to the object so if we press here shift s a pop-up menu will appear this is the menu of the 3D cursor so here we got some options like cursor to select it. this will put the 3D cursor on the position of the center of the selected object okay if we have more than one object selected it will be put on the middle right but for now let's put it here and now select the sphere shift s again and selection to cursor and there we have it we cannot see the see the, the sphere right now because it's inside the cube so let's put the screen on a wireframe mode and there we got the sphere okay now we can uh, align the 3d cursor to the grid so as you can see if I put the cursor here for example and I want it to be just on a point on the grid we can press here and cursor to grid and there we go so now we could align this object's selection to cursor okay or if I want to put them on the center just align to grid and now let's selection to cursor okay and there we go. We can also align the rotation of the, of the object. For example, here you have this sphere that is aligned with the world, but the cube is not. So if I want to align this sphere with this cube, we have to do this. In the object menu, we have an option here which is align to transform orientation. The transform orientation is this one here global normal or whatever so in this case if we work in a global uh, orientation the objects will be aligned to that orientation let's take a look with the cube so object transform align to transform orientation you can uh, add a shortcut to this option on the on the user preferences now let's press it and you can see the cube is aligned now with the transform orientation so control C for undo and what we want is to align this sphere with this cube so let's press the sphere and with shift let's select now the cube so the cube is the active object if we put this in normal coordinate system the transform will be orientated as the active object is so if we press now transform align to transform orientation it will move the sphere so it will be aligned with the cube there we have it and that's how it works there is even another use that you can give to this 3d cursor okay which is one of the most important so if we for example well let's uh, let this object stay there and let's change the cursor position here in this list I have some options for the center we are using for transforms right so you have here individual medium point when you have more than one object selected and active element okay so for example let's try them if we use the active element you see that the transform is at the position of the active element alright so if we rotate it even we have a lot of objects selected they will rotate over the active one now with individual for example they will rotate independently and this one here is 3d cursor so now they will rotate around the 3D cursor okay or they will be scaled from the 3D cursor so this is very cool for example if I want let's say uh, 
this point here, Shift S, cursor to select it. And now I can rotate this cube around that vertex, which is very cool in some cases. Okay, or I even can align the cube to that vertex. So you can use the 3D cursor as a pivot point to make transforms in the objects. And now there is another thing that I like to talk about and is this one. This option here which is manipulate object centers only. If you have more than one sl object selected, if you push here and you scale, the objects will be moved apart from each other but they will not be scaled independently so you are going just to scale the center of the object's position this is very cool so let's go to the previous scene and well that's all for this tutorial in the next one we'll talk about modifiers in blender see you soon and happy blending